factors uh, that are affecting the strength of a material. So when you have a large diameter or a material with a large cross-section area, it is able to withstand large forces more than a material which has a small diameter. That means when the diameter is large, the material is strong compared to a material which has a small diameter. So as you are noting down, please note down that diameter of a material or cross-section area of a material. And then you say that a, la a material with a large diameter, a material with a large diameter is stronger than a material with a smaller diameter. That is, that is one of the factors. Then the other is nature of a substance. Nature of a substance. What does that one mean? Now, that one means that when I have maybe a metal, it will not be of the same strength as a piece of wood because the two are of different nature. You'll find out that a metallic rod is stronger compared to a piece of wood. That means that the metallic rod can withstand larger forces compared to a piece of wood if the two are of the same size. That is another factor that affects strength of a material. Then the other factor that may affect the strength of a material is called magnitude of a force or how big a force is. How big a force is. So what does that one mean? It means that if I have a large force, Uh, for strength, that a, a large force will have, uh, will, will need a, a, a very strong material to withstand it compared to a small force. So what we have discussed, if we are to summarize, we have discussed the definition, the definition of strength, we said it's the ability of a material to withstand large forces that are trying to deform it. Then we said that, that the strength of a material depends on the factors that we have stated. And the factors that we have stated are one, cross-section area or diameter of a material, that is one. And we have said that a material with a larger diameter is stronger than a material with a smaller diameter. That was one factor. The second factor that we discussed or that we looked at was the nature of a material. And we said that a material, for example, uh, a metallic rod will be stronger than a piece of wood if the two are of the same size. 
That is what we wrote, that a piece of a metal rod will be stronger than a piece of wood if the two are of the same size. That means the nature of the nature of that means the nature of material is one of the factors that affects strength the other one is magnitude of force or how big a force is that is the other factor that we looked at so that is all about strength Maybe the other thing that you can talk about is the, are the examples, examples of strong materials. The examples you can write concrete is one of them. Concrete is one of examples of strong material. And the other one is all metals are also strong materials. Metals are also strong materials. Yes, Esther, your hand is up. I'm not able to hear. I mean, sorry, you're too fast. Okay, but what you have to do is just to note down the things that are displayed on the screen. You just note out a few. You don't have to copy everything that you see. Okay, let me reduce on that speed. Maybe some people are not following well. Ah, yes, Kanaga, your hand is also up. So, like on that part of magnitude of force applied, I didn't see anything, even I didn't take any screenshot on that part. You just note that because it's one of the factors. Let me try to find out something that you can screen on it. Okay. Okay, let us now look at another factor. Sorry, another mechanical property because the first one was strength. Now the other mechanical property that we are going to write about now is stiffness or toughness. <laughs> Sorry. So we are defining stiffness from our document here. 
that it's the ability of a material to resist bending or to resist forces which try to change its shape or size. So that is how, if, if they say something is tough, that means it is not easily bent. It, is, it can't be easily changed in shape. So that is what we call something stiff. So they are telling us that the ability of a material to resist bending or to resist forces which try to change its shape or size is what we call stiffness or toughness. So they are telling us that a material which is more stiff always needs a large force in order to bend. Now the problem will come in for someone to differentiate between stiffness and strength. Strength is the ability for material to withstand large forces before it breaks. Whereas stiffness is the ability of a material to resist bending. So stiffness is only for bending, but strength is for breaking. If you can withstand breaking, then you are strong. When you can withstand bending, then uh, we say that material is a stiff material because it can resist bending or it can resist change in shape or size. So they continue to tell us that wood is more stiff than rubber. That means if they ask for an example of stiff materials, then you can write wood. Even metals are stiff materials because some of them, for example, steel, can be able to resist uh, bending or to resist forces more than any other thing. Because some of them, when you apply a force, instead of them resisting bending, they just break. So they can't be stiff materials. Okay. That is stiffness. And then we have another mechanical property. And this mechanical property that we are going to look at again now is called ductility. Ductility, they are telling us that it's the ability of a material to deform when a force is applied. That means it will change its shape, but it will not break. You note that one clearly. Ability of a material to deform. In brackets there, you can put where there is deform, you can put to change its shape without breaking. So the ability of a material to deform when a force is applied is what we call ductility. We can also uh, write a definition as ability of a material to be changed, rolled, hammered, oppressed, or bent, or stretched into other materials, sorry, into other shapes without breaking. So that means you get this material, you can make it a square, you can make it a triangle, you can make it a rectangle, you can make it a cone, you can do everything in, on it, but that material does not break. 
Do you know any example of such materials? Is there anyone who can tell us any example of such materials that you can find, that you can change in everything that you want, but these materials are Yes, Esther. The answers are clay, steel, metals, plasticine. Okay, there is plasticine, there are metals, and so on. Yes, Kanaga, Junior. Sam, yeah, I have copper, aluminium, and steel. Aluminium and? Copper, aluminium, and steel. Okay, aluminium and steel. Okay. Because because you have they put you also. Plus you be cover. So the man has me. Hmm. Kinsey, you have your hand up. Because you have land. What? So for me, I have iron. For you, you have iron. Yes. Okay. Let us all mute our microphones. If you're done giving the answer, you mute your microphone such that we can communicate well. Okay, now some of the properties, uh, some of the examples that we have, someone gave us plasticine, it is correct. Another person gave us steel, it is also correct. Uh, some people said all metals, they are all fine. The person who said aluminum, you also qualify. And wet clay is also one of the examples of ductile materials or materials that have that ability called ductility. So if someone asks you what you can say about ductile materials, what we can call properties, first of all, we, can, we have seen that they can be changed into any shape and they can be bent without breaking. Those ones are, are, are some of the properties of ductile materials. They can be molded into any shape and they can be bent without breaking. Okay, after looking at uh, ductile materials, uh, the other mechanical property that we are going to be looking at is brittleness. Brittleness. Someone at the beginning of the lesson was asking me, teacher, what is bitterness? So we are here. Bitterness is the ability of a material to break suddenly without bending. 
So when you apply a force on such a material, which we call a brittle material, that material will just break without warning. So it will just break. That's why they said it's the ability of a material to break suddenly without bending. So that is what we call <coughs> That is what we call brittleness. Yes, Pule, your hand is up. Anything you want to say? Pule, Isaac? Yeah, excuse me, sir. I didn't get the meaning of ductile materials and the examples. Excuse me, sir. Well, I got your question. You said you didn't get the examples of ductile material and the definition. <laughs> we said that ductility is the ability of a material to deform when a force is applied on it and we said if they said deform it means that this material can be changed into any shape without it breaking so if they ask you to define what is a ductile material you can say that a ductile material is a material that is able to deform when a force is applied on it, and you can even add without breaking. A ductile material is a material which is able to deform when a force is applied on it without breaking. And the examples that the people gave us, we had wet clay, we had plasticine, we had metals, and then we had steel. So briefly, those that was about ductility. So now we are looking at brittleness. We said that brittleness is the ability of a material to break suddenly without bending. So if someone asks you about a brittle material, you say this is a material that breaks suddenly when a force is applied without breaking. A brittle material is a material that breaks suddenly without bending. That is called the brittle material. Examples have been given to us. We have glass, we have chalk, we have stones, we have concrete, we have iron bricks, the iron which is cast iron somehow like clay. We have alloys like brass and bronze. Alloys is a mixture of uh, metals. So brass and bronze are also brittle materials. They don't warn you, they just break without warning. Yes, Esther. Teacher. Sorry. Application Sorry? to the ductile materials. Application? 
Yes. What? Of that kind of materials. Okay. Yes. Now someone asks for uh, application of ductile materials. Where are they applied? Because of their ability for them to change into its different shapes. So they are used to make saucepans. They can be used to make different materials in different shapes because they are, can be molded into any shape without breaking. So that is mainly one of uh, the what the, the applications. Maybe if you are saying properties, properties we say they can be molded into any shape. The other one they can uh, be folded without breaking. That is those are the properties. But applications is used to make different materials of different shapes. That is uh, the application that you can have. And you can give, for example, uh, saucepans. Those ones who bake cakes, you know what we call cake molds. All those ones are made from ductile materials. So for brittle materials, we have discussed the definition and the properties is that they suddenly break without undergoing any deformation and they cannot be molded into any shape because for them, they just break suddenly. So once you try to bend them or change them into any other shape, they will just break. And they have given us examples such as chalk, stones, glass, concrete, cast iron bricks, and alloys of brass and bronze. So that is it about Britonians. Yes, Esther Agatha, your hand is up. Okay, teacher, you say that Briton materials cannot be molded back, but the last line under the definition of Britonness says when a Briton material breaks, its pieces fit together almost exactly and can be glued back. So that's my concern. Now molding into any shape, is that what you are talking about? If we say molding into any shape, it's like if I have an aluminum wire, I can make it somehow like a car, I can make it an, a hanger, I can make it a straight wire. So that is molding it into a, a, a different shape, which can't be done on this one. And the first property was like, it breaks suddenly without undergoing plastic deformation. So when it breaks, for example, if glass breaks, if I break a glass, and I tell you to glue it back properly. You also know that it can't go back into the same shape as it has been in. So it is difficult for us to change a brittle material into different shapes because once it breaks, once it breaks, it can't be glued back properly as it was. That's why even in this uh, statement that you are quoting, there is a word that they fixed there almost exactly. So that means it can't be put back the same way it was. If you break a glass and glue it back together, it won't be the same way as it was at the beginning. So that is what I was trying to mean about brittle materials. Okay, if that one is done, then I want us to look at, at the last mechanical property of those ones that we stated. 
the one which is called elasticity something being elastic so can someone read for us that definition of elasticity I want to read for us the definition. I have many participants here. Mrs. Viola, I think your name is here. Viola, you read for us. Elasticity is the ability of a material to recover its original shape and size after the after a deformation force has been removed okay thank you viola for reading for us now when we have a material for example rubber band when you pull it it will stretch but when you remove the pulling force then that rubber band will regain back its shape and, and size. So a material that is able to do that is what we call an elastic material. So we say that elasticity is the ability of a material to recover or to regain or to get back its original shape and size after the deforming force has been removed. So when you put a force on a material which is elastic, that material is deformed because of the force or it is stretched because of the force or there is an extension on that material because of the force. But when you remove that force, that material is going to come back into its original shape and size. So materials that are able to do that are called elastic materials. And examples include rubber, uh, some springs, springs that some of you call sepulin. Hmm? The springs and then some steel also does it that some steel if we have wires of steel some of them have that elasticity in them though it is of low degree but it's there so you can use rubber you can say rubber you can say uh, springs those are examples of materials that are elastic Now, these elastic materials lead us to what we call Hooke's law. Lead us to what we call Hooke's law. <coughs> so can someone state for us and read for us the statement of Hooke's law? How do we state it? Anyone to read for us? Participants, hands up. Erima. Hook's law states that the extension of a material is directly proportional to the applied force provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. That is to say, the material returns to its original length when the stretching force is removed, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. In okay. short. Okay, thank you, Erima, for reading for us. Now, I want someone who can take us through 
this law. I'm going to underline uh, some words and phrases for someone to help us and you tell us what do you think these phrases mean? For example, there is one word here, which is extension. Then there is another word directly proportional. Then there is this one where they have told us provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. So can any of you here raise up your hand and you tell us what do you think is the meaning of any of those phrases or words that I've underlined? Any that you feel like you can tell me about extension, you can tell me about directly proportional, you can tell me about uh, elastic limit. Yes, Ariel. I'm going to talk about provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. Uh, yes. What I, I think about this is that, uh, like, let's say if you stretch a rubber band, uh, mm. until like the elastic limit is not exceeded, so it won't tear. Uh, mm. Yeah, that I get. Okay, Ariel. Ariel is telling us that when you have a rubber band, there is that point when it reaches and it cannot go more from there. So what happens is it just tears up. So that means there is a point where this rubber band is stretched to its limit. So that limit is called the elastic limit. That point where you can stretch a rubber band and it comes back. You can stretch and it comes back. But when you exceed that limit, then we cannot have our rubber band coming back. Faith Hilda. Um, um, I'm going to explain the Hooke's law states that the extension of, ma of a material yes. is directly proportioned to the force applied. So I understand this in a way that in, for example, rubber band, mm. as it stretches, right? The mm. stretching, should I say, the elasticity mm. is equivalent to the force that, you're, that is being applied. So if you apply a large force, it will stretch more compared to when one applies a less force, then provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. I understand this in a way that every elastic material has a limit to its elasticity, has a point where it will break. Like, yeah. Okay, thank you, Hilda, for that wonderful answer that you have given us. Yes, Angel. I think Angel has gone off. All right, uh, Hilda has given us a very good answer that says that, she said that Hooke's law, according to her, this phrase that says extension is directly proportional to the applied force. That whenever you increase the force, even the stretching increases. That is what it means. So if someone says directly proportional, if two things are directly proportional, that means that when one increases, also the other increases. So uh, when we apply a large force, we will be having a big extension. And when we have a small force, we will also be having a small extension. Provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. We said if there is a limit where when you exceed that limit, then the material is either going to break or it's going to lose its shape. 
So that point is what we call the elastic limit. And they have given us here that in short, force, this symbol here is a proportionality symbol. So it means that force is directly proportional to extension. And whenever you find a proportionality, uh, proportionality symbol, that proportionality symbol can be changed. Instead of having that proportionality symbol, you put equal to a constant. So that is it here. Where we had the proportionality symbol, now we are having equal to a constant. That K is a constant. So if our force is F and the, our extension is E, then this K is a constant and this constant has a name and its name is either spring constant if we are dealing with a spring or if it's any other material, we can say that it's forcey constant. So that is the that, that K that you are, we have written there, that constant that you see there is called force constant. So Hooke's law is going to lead us to many calculations and I want us to prepare for them. We are going to have like three examples. And if we have time, we will try out some three also or two so that we can be able to, to learn what Hooke's law is. I've told you that that value K is a 4C constant. <laughs> now uh, what i was explaining to you has been written here that k is a proportionality constant or material constant which we called a force constant or a springy constant if we have used the spring and they have told us that f is force in newtons and e is the extension in meters now how do we get extension let us have an example here if I have uh, let us look at this white screen here. If I have maybe a spring. whose length is uh, whose length is l naught or what what will mean original length that is its original length then if someone comes and on this spring he puts a force maybe of, let me say four newtons. 
this string which has been having a small length l naught will increase in its length so the, the length will increase to somewhere there because there is a force which i gave you as four newtons so that means that what had what was l not now has become let me call that new length l1 so someone will ask you for the extension extension from this will be equal to how much length has been added by putting that force that is the extension so to get it i'll be getting my l my l1 which is the new length then i subtract off the l0 which is my original length so l1 is new length and l0 is original length sheila your hand is up sheila okay i'm going to do it again okay i was telling you that if i have a spring if i have a sapling whose original length is l zero like i've written it there to show that this is original length and then if i add l1 if i put a force this this spring will increase its length its length will increase so the amount by which the length has increased is what we call extension and that extension is got from the new length which we have called l1 minus the original length which has been called l naught so that is how we get extension so after getting that extension then you can use it in f uh, is equal to ke then you can find any of those things that will be uh, given to us so let us try some examples here and we see how they ca are calculated so you write down that question in your books then someone read it for us and then we go through it together step by step yes jolene jolene a spring is stretched by 0 0.05 meters by, by a weight of five newtons hung from one end. What will what weight will stretch it by 0 0.03 meters? Okay, thank you for reading for us. And then they asked for the spring constant. Let us write that question in our books and then we go through it together. I'm giving you only two, one minute for copying the questions.
Okay, let us see. Uh, I'll go through this question. But before we go through this question, there is something I had missed here in our notes. In our notes here, they told us that it is important also, note that F1 out of E1 is equal to F2 out of E2. Someone may ask why. So I'm going to explain this on a white screen and we also do our number there. Okay, let us uh, me share the white screen and <coughs> now remember when we are writing our law, we wrote that F is equal to, we wrote that F, which is force, is equal to K times E, where E is the extension. So what we have to do there uh, is the, if we want to make K the subject, I'm making the making uh, K the subject means that we leave K alone on each side. So if we want to make K the subject, what we do here as mathematicians is to divide by E on both sides, such that this E cancels with this one, and we'll be remaining with F, which is force out of E, which is extension to be equal to a constant K. Now, if someone says, something is constant means that if I get a force and I divide it with the extension that that force causes, it will be the same as if I get another force divide by its extension that it causes and so on. So long as if we have a force and its extension. So if I have another force F3, this one will also be equal to the force F3 out of E3. So that means that the ratio of force to extension is the same if we are dealing with the same material. This is what they wanted us to note before we go on to our calculations. Now, in our calculations, they gave us a, a, a material which extends by, if they say we extend by, that means that is the extension. If they say we, we extend it to, that means that we are extending to a new length. But if we extend by, this by means that what they have given us in question is extension. So in that question that you have copied down, our extension one is Z, 0 0.05. And that extension is caused by a force of five newtons. And they have told us to get 
the force which would cause an extension. Now I'm going to call that extension E2. That would cause an extension of zero point zero three meters. So how do we go about this? We will just cut this thing that we have written here. We'll just cut this one here. And we say that from F1 out of E1 being equal to F2 out of E2, now we realize that here, what we don't have is F2. So we substitute for the others. Our F1 is the, our F1 is five out of our E1. Remember they told us force must be in Newtons and extension must be in meters. So this one is 0 0.05 Sorry. This one is zero point zero five. This one is going to be equal to force two, which we don't have. But then we are dividing it with E2, which we have as the zero point. Zero three. So I'm sure you know that at this point that we are here at, the next thing will be us to cross it, multiply. So on cross multiplying, we'll be having zero point zero five F two. being equal to five times zero point zero three. So I don't know if you have your calculators around, but our F2 will be equal to five times this, I think we'll be having zero, Point one five, then divide by zero point zero five. What will be our value of F two for those ones who have their calculators? Yes, Jolie. So the answer is three. So the answer is three Newtons. That means our force that we are looking for will be three Newtons. Thank you, Jolene. Now I'm seeing someone in the chat asking me, where is the 0 0.03 coming from? I thought you people coped the questions properly. We had the question, it was one question, we coped it and So our answer here, F2 or the force that would cause an extension of 0 0.03 is three, is three 
newtons. And part two of that question, uh, Ebo is asking, what about the 0 0.15? Remember, we cross multiplied at this point here. We cross multiplied five times 0 0.03 and 0 0.05 times F. And on cross multiplying, the five times 0 0.03 gives, gave us 0 0.15. So that is the uh, one approach. Then part two, they asked us to get the constant K. So how would we get K? We know that K, the constant is equal to F out of E. So you choose which F and E to use. You can use the 0 0.05 and the five, or you can use the three and the 0 0.03. You will get the same answer because that one is a constant. So if I use 0 0.3 and a three, my F is three, my E extension is 0 0.03. So I'll be finding my K, the constant as, I think it will be 100 if I've calculated well. 100 and its units are newtons because I'm getting force. Then per meter because I'm dividing by extension, which is in meters. So my K is 100 newtons per meter. Esther Agatha, your hand is up. Okay, teacher, I have under, I've understood the concept, except mm. for the first part where you say, where I wrote in blue, F is equal mm. to K times E. But then you said as mathematicians, you- We, 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 we wanted- by e. I want to know how that comes in. Of dividing okay. sides by E. Okay. Now, when we are doing that, we wanted to come up with the uh, a way of getting, if given force and extension, we wanted to get a way of getting to that a point where I have pointed, if you can see on your screen. So the only way to get there is making K the subject. Making K the subject means that you leave K alone on each side. Remember in our expression for Hooke's law, we had it that F is equal to KE. So we wanted to leave K alone on each side. The only way to do that is if we divided by E on both sides, such that the E which is up here can cancel out and it goes down here on F, such that we remain with F out of E is equal to, is equal to K. That is the only way we can come now and say that since F out of E is constant, then that means the first force and its extension, their ratio will be the same as the second force and its extension and so on, because F over E is constant or F over E is the same for all forces and their extensions on that specific material. So that is why I had that. And K, we said K is a constant called the springy constant, or you can also call it the force constant. Hope I've answered your question well. Okay, after that, 
Uh, we need to do more questions. So there is that example too. Someone to read for us example two. Yolin, your hand is up. Is there anything wrong? Yeah, okay. So like me, I got three as the answer, but I did mm. not use the method that you've told us. Okay, what did you use? You first okay. found the K? No. Mm. I divided, like I divided five by 0 0.05 then i got 100 yes that is the k then you used it to get three eh? yes yeah, it's also fine it has no problem okay mm. okay leah you read for us uh, the second question second question says as its length from 20 centimeters to 25 centimeters when a force is applied. Mm. If the spring is constant, is 100, 100 newtons per meter, calculate the force. Okay, so we had a spring that increases its length from 20 centimeters to 25. What does it mean? It means that its original length was 20. But then when a force was applied, the length extended to 25. <laughs> uh, we were saying that the original length of this spring was 20 and then it increased to 25 when a force was applied. So they are asking us that if the spring constant is 100, they want us to find the force. So how are we going to do this? Now, to do this one, we'll just quote our formula that F is equal to K times E. Now, according to what they have given us, we don't have the F, but they have given us the K as 100, but we don't have the E. But we know from our notes that we had that extension E can be got from the new length, which we called L1, minus the original length, which we called L0. So this one means that we will be having our L1, remember extension has to be in meters. So as I subtract these two lengths, I'm going to put them in meters. Our new length was 25, so I'm going to divide by 100 because I'm putting it in, in meters. Because I'm putting it in meters, then I subtract off 20 out of 100 because I'm also putting it in, in meters. So our extension E will be the same as having 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.20. So to subtract these two, we'll be having our final answer as 0 0.05 meters. So these ones here, are meters but of extension but they didn't ask us for e they asked us for f so what we are going to do is to say that there are four our force f is going to be equal to they told us the k is 100 
So we are going to put K as 100 times our extension that we have got in meters, which is 0 0.05. And we'll be getting our answer of F as 5 Newtons. So this one here is the force that we were asking for in our example two. Yes, Angel, your hand is up. Master, don't you think that this method that you use to find the to find the E is so complicated? How is it right when I just get 25 minus 20? Then I get five and then change that five to the meters. It's, and it's, use it's, it. it's all fine. So long as you have your final answer of uh, extension in meters, doesn't matter how you have got it. So long as it's a correct extension in meters, then it's okay. You can choose to say 25 minus 20 and then you get five and then you divide by 100. It is also fine. So you don't have to worry about how I've done it. So long as you can do it in another correct way, it's also okay. So that was our example two. Our time is gone. Let me see if I can get for you some few questions to try out. Let me share. Okay, we have some three questions here. Let us take screenshots or let us copy them, whatever you want. It's an exercise of three questions. So you try them. In your time and you can send your answers. In the groups. <laughs> now, when you are copying number one, you please write that hint that I've put, because I've seen they are asking for, they are putting in mass, and for us, we have been talking about forces only and weights. So if you find mass and you want to change it to a force, you get that mass, which is in, uh, if it's in grams, you first have to put it in kilograms, and then you make it a force by multiplying by 10, which 10 is ac acceleration due to gravity. So anywhere you find it useful for you, you can use it as you wish. That hint that I've put for you in blue, you copy it as you copy a number one. Then others are okay. You take screenshots, you can copy now, you can, um, I think I can also take a screenshot and I send you in the groups. Okay, I will send this screenshot in the group so that you can be able to do uh, that work properly. 
uh, the PDF for the work, I think I will send it there. Yes, I'm going to send it in the group so that you can be able to have it. So let me request one of you to pray for us as we stop our lesson. One person to pray for us as our lesson comes to an end. Thank all of you for being patient and for asking questions and for participating. One person to pray for us. Yes, Joseph. Humble yourselves that we pray. Well, loving Father, we thank you for the gift of the teacher. We thank you for the gift of this one. We thank you for the gift of the knowledge you provided through the teacher to get to us. Lord Father, we thank you. <coughs> yes, Joseph, are you still with us? I think he's off. Okay, we thank God for the wonderful time we have had. And we thank him for providing for us the data and the time and the good health such that we can attend these lessons. And we pray that he continues to do good things for us in our families, in our homes, in our schools, and everywhere we are, so that we keep happy and jolly and fine and wise. In his name we have prayed, and we all say, Amen. Okay, we thank you all for attending. And thank you for coming. Uh, we can say hello to each other for the last time, and then we so you can unmute and say hello to your friends, and then we. Hello, guys. Okay, have a nice evening and uh, make it a point to Hi. 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 Okay, bye. <laughs> you guys, who's probably? Bye. <laughs> Guys, who's Pabby? Guys, who's Pabby? Who? Who is who? Who is Pabby?